In example 7.9, we're going to calculate the value of the gravitational force between some everyday life sized objects, namely some billiard balls. So we've got three billiard balls sitting on a table. This is a top view, so this is all happening in the horizontal plane. And they are at the uh, vertices of a three, four, five right triangle. All three billiard balls have the same mass of uh, 0.3 kilograms. And uh, we've labeled them one, two, three. We're gonna answer two questions. First one is what is the net gravitational force on M1 due to the fact that the other two billiard balls are pulling on it? And the second question is what's the force of mass two pulling on mass three? Just the force between those two uh, objects. And we're gonna work with vectors because these forces are vectors, so there's gonna be quite a bit of uh, vector math again. This might take you back to the earlier part of the semester where we had to do lots of uh, trigonometry with vectors. So we're back to doing that stuff again. And um, I told you you'd always have to do it. And in fact, in physics seven, it's just gonna get worse because you're gonna see similar problems like this with electric charges and a lot of the uh, vector math is pretty involved. So this problem will actually get you ready for physics seven. Okay, part A, what's the net gravitational force on M1? Well, first of all, let's just think about what this means. There's a gravity force between M1 and M3. They're both pulling on one another. So as far as M1 is concerned, it experiences this force of gravity caused by mass three because it's getting attracted to mass three. That force is directed to the right. Notice that this force vector is just along the x direction if we have an x y coordinate system. And similarly, mass one is getting pulled by gravity force, it's getting attracted to mass two. So there's also a force of mass two pulling on mass one. We have two vectors. We're going to calculate the magnitude of each of these vectors and then do the vector sum. So the net force on mass one is F21 plus F31. All right, so that's our, our starting point and we need to calculate the magnitudes of each of those forces and express their directions. So let's start with the magnitude of F21. That's the gravity force of mass two. Pulling on M1, it equals G, M1, M2 over R12 squared. So we're given all these numbers, we know that G is 6.67 times 10 to minus 11 newtons meters squared per kilogram squared. M1 is 0.3 kilograms. M2 is also 0.3. Running out of room. And the distance between them squared is 0.4 meters. When you put all that together, you get 3.75 times 10 to the minus 11 newtons. Right away, there's something interesting to notice. We have never in this class so far 
seen forces this weak, this small. All our problems so far with mechanics have had forces of a few newtons or tens of newtons or hundreds of newtons. Maybe like a tenth of a newton. But 10 minus 11, that is so puny. That is so small. In other words, in everyday life, you never notice the gravity force between two regular sized objects, between two billiard balls. Uh, this is so minuscule that it doesn't matter. The friction force between the balls and the table is way, way bigger than this. So they'll, they won't move and get attracted towards one another because of gravity. Uh, so we're seeing now that gravity forces are actually really weak and the only reason why we notice the gravity force between um, the earth and objects in everyday life is because the earth's mass is so enormous that it can overcome the fact that this g constant is really tiny but these billiard balls are just 0.3 kilograms and they can't compensate for the the smallness of G. Okay, let's keep going with the problem. Uh, F31. Um, Same procedure. G, M1, M3 over R1, 3 squared. We've got all those numbers, plug them in. 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newtons. Um, oops, sorry. I labeled this wrong. That should be 0.3 meters, which is why um, you have all these 0.3s that cancel and you just get left with this number 6.67. Okay, again, super tiny, minuscule force. Notice it's a little bit bigger than F21 because mass one and mass three are closer together. These are farther apart. So because it's an inverse square law, the force between one and two is smaller than the force between one and three. Okay, well, if you want to add those forces together to give you the net force on mass one, you have to do it as a vector sum, right? Um, fortunately, the problem was nice to you a little bit and had each of these vectors just pointing along an axis. So F21 is entirely along the y-axis. So in component form, it would be 0, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. Or maybe we'll write this in symbols for now. It only has a y component. Similarly, F31 only has an x component. It is uh, 3.75 times 10 to the minus 11 newtons, comma, zero. Or to avoid having to write that long number, F31x, comma, zero. And that means that the net force has a magnitude, well, the, the net force vector would be uh, 3.75 times 10 to the minus 11 newtons, comma, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newtons. And the net force magnitude is given by the Pythagorean theorem, square root of the sum of the squares. gives you 7.65 times 10 to the minus 11 newtons. And if you want to find the angle when these two vectors get added together, find that angle right here. 
inverse tangent, opposite over adjacent, y component over x component, and it is 29.3 degrees. Okay, so this is from, from here on down, all that is just vector addition stuff that we've been doing all semester. The new physics part of it was understanding how to find the magnitudes of these vectors. These vectors represent the gravity force between two pairs of objects. And um, it's kind of interesting to note that when you have several objects all pulling on one another via gravity, you can analyze that situation as being um, the sum of the interactions of pairs of objects. So you only deal with two at a time. We dealt with the gravity force between one and two, and then the gravity force between one and three, and then added those together to give you the force on mass one. Occasionally students will ask me, well, why didn't we also consider the force between mass two and mass three? Uh, that's because that's not what the question is asking. The force between two and three doesn't have anything to do with the force on one. In part B, we will calculate the force of two on three, but that's um, separate and doesn't affect mass one. Okay, so let's do uh, part B. force of mass 2 on mass 3. Now it's easy to find the magnitude, but force is a vector, so we're also going to find the, the direction and the components, so that's going to take some, some uh, trigonometry to do that. The magnitude of the gravity force between 2 and 3 is given by our same law of universal gravitation, F equals G M2 M3 times the distance between 2 and 3 squared. We know all those numbers. When you plug it in, you get 2.4 times 10 minus 11 newtons. Cool. Uh, but now let's look at the, the vector itself. Okay, the gravity force on M3 from mass 2 is directed along the line between them. So we need to figure out uh, this angle. and then we can get the components. So that's a three, whoops. That's a three, four, five right tri triangle, or point three, point four, point five right triangle, doesn't really matter. And we can see that the, um, cosine uh, of that angle, because sorry, because here's our vector. Oops. All right, so the cosine of that angle is adjacent over hypotenuse, and sine of that angle is 
opposite over hypotenuse. And we've got the x component, we've got the y component. X component gets the cosine, and the y component gets the sine. And furthermore, that x component should get a minus because it's going to the left. Y component gets a um, plus sign because it is going positive. All right, so you plug in all these numbers and finally we get this result. message here is that the gravity force is utterly inconsequential if you're playing pool. Um, these forces, 10 to the minus 11 newtons, they are so small that you will never notice them. They're so small that it's difficult to measure them at all, even using super sensitive uh, equipment. The, the Cavendish experiment to measure uh, a deflection of normal sized objects through the gravity forces was a really difficult experiment to do. It's a really sensitive experiment. So uh, you're never going to notice this stuff in everyday life. Gravity is the weakest of the uh, four forces that occur in nature. Uh, the four fundamental forces in nature are gravity, the electromagnetic force, the strong nuclear force, the weak nuclear force. And gravity is by far the weakest of all of those. We only notice it. It only becomes important when you deal with objects that have a huge amount of mass, like planets or stars.